Let's look at a few problems similar to the ones that you had to do for the equilibrium experiment. The first one is exactly what you did in the equilibrium experiment, only a different situation. So we have a student that wants to replicate the lab, but the concentrations of the solutions in the middle of the room have changed. She wants to make 25 milliliters of a diluted KSCN solution from the concentrated KSCN solution. And she's going to mix 10 milliliters of that solution she makes with 10 milliliters of the iron solution. Then she's going to take that to the spectrophotometer, measure the absorbance, and convert it to a concentration of the colored product. In this case, she gets 0 0.000742 molar for the concentration of the product at equilibrium. So we know that value in our ice table. We're going to use some M1V1 concentrations to help us fill out the rest of this ice table. First of all, how is she going to make the diluted KSCN solution? She knows she wants to make a solution that is 0 0.00640 molar, and she wants to make 25 milliliters of that solution. So we have M2 and V2 for our M1V1 equals M2V2 calculation. We also know the original stock solution is 0.4 molar. All we need to do is find out how much of that we need. We need to find V1. So if we plug our numbers in and solve for V1, we will see that we need 0.4 milliliters of the concentrated KSCN solution. We want to dilute that to 25 milliliters. So how much water do we need? Well, 25 minus 0.4 is 24.6. So we're going to take 0.4 milliliters of the concentrated KSCN solution and add 24.6 milliliters of water to make the 25 milliliter solution needed for the rest of the experiment. Let's get started on the equilibrium part of the calculation. We know the equilibrium expression is products over reactants. Uh, it's a nice one-to-one -one ratio throughout the equation, so everything's raised to the first power. We already know the equilibrium concentration of our product. We need to find the equilibrium concentration of our reactants. To do that, we first have to know the initial concentrations of our reactants. So let's start with Fe3+. We know we're going to use 10 milliliters of the 0.5 molar solution of iron nitrate. So we know M1 and V1. We're going to mix this with 10 milliliters of the KSCN solution. So the final volume, V2, will be 20 milliliters. So when we solve for M2, we get 0 0.00250 molar. We're going to repeat this process to find the initial concentration of SCN minus. We start with a 0 0.00640 molar solution and we take 10 milliliters of that. Since we add that to 10 milliliters of the iron nitrate solution, we know V2 is 20 milliliters. When we solve for M2, we get 0 0.00320 molar SCN minus. These are our initial concentrations of Fe3 plus and SCN minus ions. We know, since we don't have any product initially, that product is going to be made. So how do we define the change? We don't know the change, so we just call it X. And since the product increases by X, and we have a nice one to one to one ratio, we know the reactants are both going to decrease by that same value. We have a little equation here. 0 plus x equals 0 0.000742. So we know what x is. Whatever our equilibrium concentration of our colored product is, that's also what our change in concentration of our reactants is. So we can plug that in for uh, the change of both reactants, and then we can do the subtraction. We have to follow our sig fig rules. We have a number that's five decimal places minus a number that is six decimal places for both instances of our reactants. That means our equilibrium concentrations can only have five decimal places. So after we plug these numbers in to our equilibrium expression, we get a number of 171.378. This number can only be three sig figs because the numbers in the equilibrium expression only have three sig figs. So 171 is our final answer. Based on that K that we calculated, our products or reactants favored. Well, K is greater than one. The only way that happens is if the numerator is bigger than the denominator 
products are in the numerator, so products are favored. Here's another sample problem that is exactly like the equilibrium portion of the problem we just did. I encourage you to pause the video and try it out. When you think you got it, press play and it'll work through the solution to the problem. You should get 370 for your K value. What if the equation that reaches equilibrium does not have a nice one to one to one ratio? What do you do then? Let's look at this problem. We're given initial concentration of our reactants and we're given the equilibrium concentration of our product. We can write the equilibrium expression as products over reactants. Remember to square B because we have a two in front of B in the ballast reaction. We already know what our equilibrium concentration of our product is, so we know our numerator. We just have to figure out our denominator by determining the equilibrium concentration of our reactants. So we are going to define our change just like we did before. Since we don't know what, how the product changes, we are going to define our change in concentration just as we did before. We know the products are going to increase in concentration, and we will just call that plus x. Since we have a nice one-to-one -one ratio between AB2, our product, and A, one of our reactants, we know A is going to decrease by X. But now we have two Bs. So another way you can think about writing the reactants is A plus B plus B. So we have the two Bs. If we had it individually, we would write minus X and minus X for each B. But we can combine those terms and it's simply minus 2x. So whatever the coefficient is in the balanced reaction, when it comes to defining the change, you simply take that coefficient and multiply it by x. Since we know there's a nice one-to-one -one ratio between the product and reactant, we know we can subtract 0 0.024 from A to get the equilibrium concentration of A, 0 0.022. We can put that into our equilibrium expression. Well, how do we figure out what to subtract from B? Well, remember, we have an equation over here for our product. 0 plus x is 0 0.024, which means x is 0 0.024. So all I got to do is take negative 2 times that amount to get 0 0.048. That is the value we're going to subtract from B. That'll get us an equilibrium concentration of 0 0.02. When we plug that into the equilibrium expression and solve it all to the correct number of sig figs, we should get 2700. In the final problem, we are given an equilibrium constant and we are given the equilibrium concentration of, in this case, the reactants. We are supposed to find the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and I2. As always, let's start by writing the equilibrium expression, products over reactants, remember to square hi because of the coefficient in the balanced equation. So how do we go about this? So we know some values to plug into this equilibrium expression already. The only thing we don't know is the equilibrium concentration of our products. We know k is 0 0.050. The equilibrium concentration of our reactant is 0 0.0707. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my ice table. Now we're going to fill out the rest of this ice table. The initial concentrations we don't really need to know those, especially the reactant. It doesn't really matter what the initial concentration was. We do know that the products, we didn't have any of those initially. We need to do this so we can define the change. So remember, if there's a coefficient in front of a substance in the balanced reaction, when we define our change, we multiply x by that number. So we know the reactants are going to decrease by 2x. Really, for this problem, that's not even going to matter. But we do need to know what the change is for our products. Since we only have one H2, we know that's going to increase by X. So knowing that, what will be the variable we use for I2? Here are some choices. Well, since it's a nice one-to-one -one ratio of H2 and I2, it's going to be the same variable as what we used for H2. It's simply plus X. Now that we've defined the change, we can come up with the equilibrium concentrations by just looking at our initial and change. 
we're going to define the equilibrium concentrations of both H2 and I2 as X. Now we can plug these values into our equilibrium expression and solve for X. So the numerator becomes X squared. So we have X squared equals 0 0.050 times 0 0.0707 squared. We're just set to solve for X. So we're going to take the square root of that product and we end up with an answer of 0 0.0158. The equilibrium constant is only two sig figs, so our answer can only be two sig figs. The equilibrium concentration of both products is 0 0.016 molar.